Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today, sponsored by GayRealEstate.com. And we are here with one returning guest and someone new. We're here with both Gus Penaranda from the New Jersey Pride Chamber of Commerce and Brielle winslow Majette from uh, Garden State Equality. How are you both? Doing well. I'm so glad to have you here because uh, we were even talking earlier, but um, uh, Gus, the last time we were we were connected on all this, you had you were telling me all about the very first LGBTQ summit at the League of Municipalities, which is kind of like a, a whole new idea for a lot of folks uh, that only is, seems very unique to New Jersey. But you guys are coming back for round two this year, right? Yes, we were we were asked to come back. Uh, and uh, when we created this, uh, we did it in partnership with Garden State Equality. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the it, you know, most people don't, you know, don't know what the league is. Basically, New Jersey is a state where everything is pretty much legislated. So this is an event that has to take place. And all 540 municipalities in the state must send representation for, you know, panels and an expo and, and, you know, and networking um, because it's, it is Atlantic City. Uh, yeah. But in 109, 107 years, there was never anything LGBT until we came in and we're like, you know, everybody was like, whoa, we didn't know that there were this many organizations and that you guys handle these issues or you work with business and advocacy, education, sports, yeah. um, you know, the, the NFL. And, and so we opened a lot of eyes and, and they asked us to come back and, and we're back with our partners, um, Garden State Equality. I do love it because especially via social media, you are both uh, really good at keeping us all informed of what you're up to. But it also really shows the strength of uh, two of the strongest LGBT organizations in New Jersey. And uh, and Brielle, yeah, t tell us a little bit about, you know, especially from your point of view, Garden State Equality being a part of this as well. Absolutely. So just to piggyback off of what Gus said, you know, this is a major event. And I think um, we can all say that, you know, the premise of the event is really to ensure that all New Jersey residents are safe and that their well-being isn't in mind. So when you think about the fact that there's over 343,000 LGBTQ residents in New Jersey, it is imperative that the LGBTQ community is represented in this event. And that is why this event is so important. So long time coming, and I really want to shout out Gus and his team because um, there's a lot of great takeaways and there was a lot of things that brought to the table last year and what we're looking forward to this year that will help to ensure that that goal of thinking about the well-being of the LGBTQ community is met and that people have tools to make sure that we can continue to fight the good fight. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're going to have all the right people in the, in the right room for, for this. And uh, But I noticed that uh, you even have a panel uh, with the FBI based out of New Newark on uh, hate crimes as well. Right. So, you know, the LGBT community is no stranger to hate crime. Yeah. Uh, it's part of the, the history. However, um, you know, like we tell everyone, all diverse communities, all communities are LGBT communities. There's no there's no religion, language, skin tone. Not, we are all the LGBTQ community. And uh, the FBI uh, has a Citizens Academy of which I went through the training. And the alarming uh, uh, information that was provided to me was how the uh, attacks um, on diverse communities, especially the LGBT community and and, um, and other communities, has gone up, yeah. uh, and it has gone up almost double digits. So that is a concern because even though New Jersey is a, is a long state, nine million residents, you know, eight hundred thousand plus businesses, um, it's it you know you may forget because you live in the northern part what's happening in the southern or the western, um, and we're you know anchored by New York and Philly, so you don't think oh it's a blue state no. There are some serious issues that are that are happening and there are resources. And, you know, everybody says, oh, just call 911. Well, sometimes that's not enough. Yeah. Um, you know, one and I'll give you a quick bit. The the attack on the uh, people that were attending uh, a community event in Asbury Park at the church. I forgot the name of the church. Brielle. I don't know if you know the, the church. Um, they, they, they were attending there and then they were you know, they were attacked as they they were leaving. Now, the local police, you know, uh, you know, took action and then they worked with the FBI. They finally did catch um, the person that was from Pennsylvania. But one of the things that was reported to us was that a lot of the people that were at the event that, you know, were that where they were attending that community event were afraid to say yeah. anything. Yeah, they were afraid. And I'm like, how is that possible in New Jersey? let alone Asbury Park in 2023. So the FBI um, felt that, you know, they, they we, we approached them and said, 
do you have information that you think would help the community? And they're like, by all means, yes, we want to be there. And they're sending their team. They're sending an entire team of special agents, literally, not just LGBT hate crimes, all hate crimes. Because right now, wow. you can't turn on the television or your or your your iPad or whatever without hearing, you know, bias attacks on on so many different communities, especially with what's happening in Israel. So this is important to everyone. And wow. they're doing it um, on their time. This is a free event and they're going to be there and they are going to answer any question that's put to them and they're going to provide you resources because there are more than just dialing 911 resources on what you can do if you happen to be a victim or if you are working with those that have been victims, um, you know, and they need help. Yeah. Wow. Well, I know that's what, one of the pillars that I, even on the website, I saw advocacy is a big part of this, but you have three others with business, education, and sports. And I didn't know if either one of you wanted to kind of talk a little bit about some of the additional programming and stuff that we can all expect. Well, Brill, you were part of the sporting community. You told me that, and I always keep forgetting that that's such a great story. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, number one, I just want to answer your question, Gus. So in terms of the church, um, it was called Asbury Park's Trinity Episcopal Church. So um, and also I had the opportunity to um, attend a similar uh, training by the FBI and the attorney general. And if I could tell you just being a part of the community and being someone who has been in a situation that could be deemed an um, intimidation bias or a hate crime, um, not knowing what to do in that moment, I walked away with tools that made me feel comfortable just in case I'm in that similar situation in the future. So um, I'm so excited for that portion to be there because there's such great nuggets that people are gonna be able to take away to really help and make sure that they're safe. Um, I did did want to talk about one more thing in terms of advocacy. Um, you mentioned, Gus, that you know uh, people think New Jersey is a blue state, and although New Jersey is on paper blue, we talk about the different red areas. Um, when it comes to advocacy right now, and a big portion, Matt, you talked about education. Um, there is an attack on education all throughout the state. Um, we are seeing school boards repealing policies. We are seeing school boards forgetting that at the center in the root of everyday education is the kid and the child and their well-being. And we're missing that. And this is an opportunity for us to bring light to what's actually happening, but to also talk about advocating for yourself. As a parent, how can you advocate for your trans child who may feel like they're unsafe in the school setting? As a trans high school student, how do you advocate to your administrators to make sure that you have a bathroom that affirms you, that you have education that you see yourself in, and that you have safety with Within the walls that you spend all of your time. So I wanted to make sure that like the advocacy portion is really going to bring home some of the issues that we're facing in New Jersey that most people don't know about and how we can make sure we're bringing our voices to the table. Because like Gus said, there isn't just one LGBTQ community. LGBTQ reigns true in all communities, whether you know someone, you have a child, you, your best friend is a part of the LGBTQ community and all of our voices are needed right now. But on the sports tip, um, I, I have a passion and I was, um, last year's event, we had a person and I don't remember their name, Gus, but someone from Nike came to speak about be true. And, um, I was just like, like motivated because I remember being a athlete. And when I saw that campaign for be true, I was like, oh my God, there's a space for us. Like the intersectionality between being an athlete and being queer was never there before and never in a way that you were able to be proud of it. And now as a queer person who is a power lifter who faces a lot of um, backlash in terms of what my gender identity is, if I belong where I am and facing similar, some of the similar concepts that trans women face because of how my how I present, if I'm allowed to be in the same spaces and continue to compete with people that I biologically identify with. And the reason why it's so important to bring it to the table is because we're seeing an attack on sports just in terms of the NHL trying to ban rainbow pride tape. Yeah. And the fact that when you bring in the concept of advocacy, those players advocated for what they knew was right. And the NHL overturned that policy in particular. So I just wanna say like, it reigns true, like Gus said, all of these facets are everyday life for LGBTQ people and our legislators need to know how, th what the impact of the legislation is having on them. Yeah. Yeah, and one thing on sports too, um, you know, the NFL, has come out strong supporters of the LGBTQIA plus sports community. 
on national, well, on global TV during the draft in 2022, Roger Goodell literally said, thank you to our partners at the National Gay and Lesbian Flag Football uh, Organization, which then in turn had um, franchises like the Giants, the Cardinals, the Seattle Seahawks, and more begin to donate to their local leagues to support the initiative. Um, so, and the, any, the NFL doesn't do anything unless they know they're going to get something out of it in the end. So that was just, you know, and we, that's what you learn. And the reason I brought that up, not so much about, about football, but the fact is when I've been through this country and there are a lot of young, um, men and women, um, you know, uh, youth in general, non-binary who, who are just looking for someone that either looks like them or likes something that they like. And sports is a big thing. And there are stories after stories after stories about um, young queer youth that because they found an outlet through sports, they didn't take their life. And that is why sports became a permanent part of, of this summit, because people, if you don't know, you need to know. And if you want to know, we have the information. We're going to give you whatever we have, like the Nike Be True, Robert Goman was a gentleman's name, um, you know, to, to understand why they did it and the impact that be true, that that logo had, um, you know, um, to our community. So that's why um, we we brought in sports. And New Jersey is one of the states that still has not drawn an LGBT tournament to New Jersey. They fly into Newark and they go to New York and they go to Philly, but New Jersey has not been able to win. And I was shocked. And I'll, I'll end sports with this. I just saw the email that in 2024, the largest LGBT sporting event which is the um, all gender softball tournament, their World Series is going back, get ready, to Texas, a wow. predominantly red state. Yeah. You wanna know why? Because Texas fights, even though their legislators say one thing on the left, when they see the earned income reports after one of their tournaments where they've made $11 million in 10 days, the businesses on the ground in Texas are telling them, win that tournament we don't care but for 10 days we want so you know and and i'm shocked because you would think that oh that would never go unfortunately tournaments are revenue generating and mm -hmm. these tournaments are growing and they're getting bigger and you know but texas ohio arizona these are the states that are winning them and you know what new jersey needs to go out and bid because you know i think it'd be better for us mm -hmm. um you know business-wise community-wise and, you know, it's time. I mean, why are we letting states that don't like us, hate us, yeah. win so much of this business? And, you know, you know, we we have to get in the in the game. So that's why sports is a, is a big part of the, the summit. Yeah. Nice. Well, um, I liked also the part uh, where this entire the summit is open to New York and Pennsylvania uh, folks as well. And I'm sure anybody comes up from D.C. will not be turned away. So uh, I love yep. the openness of all that. So. But no, we're all connected. <laughs> exactly. But no, mostly I'm just really glad that you guys were uh, both uh, so taking so much time to share with us. So so I look forward to see if I can be able to uh, come on down that way as well. We'll be here. And if you want to see last year's event, you just go to our website, uh, njpridechamber.org, and the entire event from last year um, is there for you to view. Um, so you could see how um you know it all looks and how it comes together but this year we're at the ocean casino resort right on the beach fantastic well thanks again you both and uh look forward to seeing you both soon thank you so much thanks absolutely and have a great day